Welcome to another stair building education series. Let's go ahead and jump right into it with our first video. In this video, I will talk about the 17 and a half inch rule. And there's also a 25 inch rule. And both of them are about the same. So I'm just going to focus on the 17 and a half inch rule. And it's basically a rule of thumb that people used to use to design stairs. And I'm not about to suggest you can't use it today. So what you're going to do is just simply add the height of the riser and the depth of the tread. And if that comes out to be 17 and a half inches, which is what it would be right here, then you've got a good set of stairs. Now, it doesn't have to be 17 and a half inches, just as long as it's close to it. So, for example, if I had a seven and a quarter inch riser or a seven and three quarter inch riser, I'm only going to be a quarter of an inch off in my measurement unless I increase or decrease the width of the tread. And you can actually do it if you want to, if you're a firm believer in this rule. I am not. I used to be. But in reality, there are some stairways that this won't work with. Now, this won't be one of them. Six and a half inches and 11 inches should provide most of you with a comfortable step. And I hate to use the word average here. People who are taller or shorter, older or younger, might have a difficult time using the 17 and a half inch rule as a standard rule of thumb to create a comfortable stairway. Here's one that it might not work as well on, where we have a four inch riser and a 13 and a half inch step, because this stairway might not work good for larger or shorter people. For example, this stairway might have a better riser height for a shorter person, but the length of the tread will be a little too long, whereas a larger person might like the length of the step, but won't like the height of the riser. And then if we shorten the step and raise the height of the riser, again, we still have 17 and a half inches here. Yet we've just created a stairway where the riser height might be a little more difficult to use for shorter people. And the width of the step might be a little more difficult to use for people with larger feet. However, if we increase the depth of the steps to 11 inches, and we have an eight inch riser, we could end up with a more comfortable step, but definitely a safer step. For larger people again, someone who's gonna have a larger foot and won't have to walk up the stairway on their tiptoes. And I can provide you with a variety of different examples, but by now you should get the point. This is a general rule of thumb that will work sometimes, but it won't work all the time. Here is another one of those problems that stair builders seem to have a difficult time wrapping their minds around. And when I say stair builders, I think that would be somebody who might not uh, have a grasp on the art of stair building. Now, before I get started, I want to point out that I already have a couple of books written that uh, will be helpful for those of you who aren't quite wrapping your mind around how in the heck you can center the steps on a stringer. And I definitely recommend uh, checking that out. Now, but for those of you who just need a little more information, hopefully you will find it in this video. So let's go ahead and take a look at the stairway that has the treads at the front edge. And I really don't like this. This is not something, you know, I like them centered. They look a lot better. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen a stairway built like this, where the person laid out the stringers, didn't double check any of their measurements. And these treads are sticking past the edge of this about an inch. So when there's plenty of room at the back, here we can see we can move this further to the back. But either way, this is a personal preference. If you want this look here, you know, you like this look, go for it. Lay it out accordingly. If not, push the treads back. And again, this is all in the books, either one of the books on how to center the treads. Um, but the main point is, and the reason I want to, reason why I made the video is to explain that either the treads need to move back or the stringers need to move forward. And I know this is difficult to wrap your mind around, but 
this needs to be done during the stringer layout phase, the design phase of the project, and not after the stringers have been cut. So if we take a look at the two different stringers, all three of these stringers are the same. But this one here is different because I moved the treads back and I added a little bit to the stringer here. So again, these three stringers are the same to give you an idea what we are, what I actually did. So I just added more material to the stringer to make everything work out. So move the treads back um, or move the stringers forward in this direction. And again, like I said, in the book, you will have everything you need to figure this out. So this is just providing you with an idea of what it would look like or could look like if you have a situation like this where the treads are at the corner. And uh, of course, this one here where the treads have been moved back. Now, another problem that I run into often is that the there won't be a nosing on the landing or the upper floor. And hopefully this will make sense when you look at these triangles. So if we take triangles or you can use your framing square to figure this out, the measurement for the tread is going to be from the face of the tread to of the lower tread to the face of the upper tread. And this measurement in our case is going to be 10 inches. So if we did not put a nosing on here, we would have an 11 and a half inch tread, not a 10 inch tread. So we need to put a nosing on here. And, I, you know, is it a big deal? You know, I I've walked up and down plenty of these stairs and uh, I never tripped down them. I never fell, you know. Um, so is it a real big deal? I don't I don't consider it to be one, but your building inspector might not uh, share the same feeling as I do. Now, another thing when you build stairs like this, I can't see can't tell you how many times I've came across this stair stringer comes all the way down and it's a trip hazard. People come around the um, stairway. They're they're walking from this direction. They're making a turn. They got to step over this thing. You know, you got groceries in your hands. You know, bam, you're tripping or coming down. Same thing. Cut it off like this. This is uh, going to reduce the safety hazard for people tripping. And I think it looks better. I actually think this stringer looks better than this one here or even these over here. So. In this video, I am going to talk about something that is probably irrelevant to most stair builders, but something I'm going to mention anyway. And that is just exactly what a flight of stairs is. What is a flight of stairs? Is a flight of stairs an individual section of the stairway in between floors and landings? Or is a flight of stairways, a flight of stairs, a, in the entire unit of stairs. So, and this has to do with a landing, obviously not with a straight run set of stairs, but if you have a landing in between floors, so we have the lower floor and the upper floor, and then we have a landing in between. Is this a complete set of stairs that should have the same riser and tread depth? the same width. Is that what this is or are these two separate flights of stairs? And according to page 278 in the International Building Code Book, 2018 International Building Code Book, it actually says that a flight of stairs is basically a unit of stairs between a landing and a floor. Um, so this would actually be an individual flight of stairs, and this this would be another flight of stairs. So, so first flight of stairs, second flight of stairs in this situation. Now you're probably wondering what is the big deal here? You know, who, who cares, you know, if it's one flight or if it's uh, two separate ones? But this is where I think it's something that could benefit you in the future if you are a contractor, architect, um, someone who's not real familiar with the building codes. Since it states that uh, a flight of stairs shall have a landing at the top 
and the bottom. Flight of stairs, landing, floor, landing or floor. Then basically you could change the depth of the tread and the height of the risers. So this stairway here could have a seven inch risers. This one up here could have seven and a quarter inch risers. And you're probably still thinking, what? I'm going to build the stairway with, with the right height risers. You know, they're all going to be uniform and the same. I got you. I got you on that. I would too. But if you were coming to a situation where you had a stairway somewhere, and then maybe you had a door. So let's say you had a, um, this was the front of your house. And you came up to the sidewalk, went up the set of stairs, and then you had a landing or a porch, for example. And then you had a door that went into apartment number one. But then you turned and went up another stairway to apartment number two. And this had seven inch risers. And this one here had seven and a half inch risers or seven and three quarter inch risers. Then this could be a problem. But it's not going to be a problem if your local building department interprets interprets this flight of stairs as a separate one from this one here and that's the point of the video you're going to need to check with your local building department um, architects engineers to verify this information i'm not going to say that my interpretation is written in stone In this video, I will provide you with some much needed information for anyone who is planning on adding a nosing to an existing stairway. So if you have a stairway like this, you do not have a nosing on it. But this one actually does. So here is an existing stairway or a stairway built with a nosing. And a nosing is simply a projection off of the front of the riser, usually around an inch. I believe most building codes, an inch and three-eighths of an inch. One and three-eighths of an inch is the maximum a nosing can project. Now, the first thing I want to point out, and the main reason why I'm making the video, is most of the time when people walk up a set of stairs, they're not going to just be putting their feet flat on the steps and walking up the stairway. I'm not going to say that uh, they don't do it. But uh, if you pay attention to how you walk up and down a stairway, you're usually putting a lot of pressure on the front of the nosing area. And uh, if you're going to add a nosing to it, this is going to or could be a problem if it's not uh, assembled properly. So if you can see here, you're going to be using an area between this distance and this distance when you're walking up a set of stairs. You're kind of going to Put your foot on the front of the step and then set it down, proceed up the stairway. And that, of course, like I said, is going to create a lot of problem for the nosing. I've even seen um, lumber like this um, made out of uh, particle board. I'm not saying OSB or um, plywood, but I've actually seen particle board used for stairs like this. And it just uh, breaks off the front because it's not structurally. Um, strong enough to support the load. So three quarter inch OSB or plywood or even hardwoods and softwoods, you're probably not going to have a problem if it's a solid piece of lumber. So if you just simply add a strip of lumber to the stairway to create a nosing like this, there's a very good chance that the pressure from someone using the stairway um, and again, this depends on how many people are going to be using the stairway. If you just have one person using the stairway and they only go up the set of stairs once a year, you're probably not going to have a problem. Any more than that, you could have a problem because all it's going to take is one person to step on this, to put enough pressure on it to end up with something like this. And again, it's not going to take as much pressure as you even think to break something like this off. And I'm not suggesting you can't do it a different way. You can't glue it. You can't uh, put uh, 300 screws in it or, or whatever. Um, fine, give it a shot. But uh, be warned um, that uh, just by simply putting a strip on the front and a couple of nails or screws, it's not going to um, last very long. Or at least I'm suggesting that's not going to be the best method 
So as option number two, you might want to use a larger board, um, something like this where you can use have a larger area to attach to the existing stairway. So a, a real small skinny piece of wood, you're not going to have a lot of, you're not going to be able to put a lot of screws in it and you're not going to have a lot of surface area for the adhesive if you're going to use some type of a glue also. So you can glue and screw it or staple it, whatever you feel like is going to work. But don't forget, this idea here is going to provide you with a different type of nosing finish. So if you're going to carpet a stairway like this and you want to have a smaller nosing, this one here might not work. Another option would be to take a solid piece of wood and um, cut a shape to it that would work for your particular nosing. Now the only problem I would have with this is that if the lumber was, uh, wasn't was a very strong piece of wood, it could break off on the nosing. You could have, if you had, uh, let's just say you had a, the grain of the wood running in this direction, and, uh, you know, someone was to step on the edge of it, it could actually split it. So this right here isn't going to be the... Um, the best option um, using soft wood uh, might, might be a better option with hardwood. But I also need to point out that you would need to do something like this to the entire stairway. If I left one of these out at the top or the bottom, for example, and uh, let's just pretend like this is the top of the stairway, and I left this one out and I added an inch and a half to this, I'm now going to have a step that's an inch and a half longer. That's not going to make the building inspector happy. Another option, of course, will be to remove and replace the tread. So this you would simply remove the tread without the nosing and replace it with a tread that does have a nosing. Now, if you do have a stairway that is not wedged in between um, a couple of walls and you can actually take a saw and cut the entire width or length of the tread here, in that case, you can simply cut a section of the tread and then block it. Now, if you don't install the blocks, you're going to create a weak spot here. Let's just go back here. If I just put a board in here and then um, replaced it with or the section that I removed, installed a new board here, there's going to be a weak spot in between the stringers. So this is going to be a weak spot here. So you're going to need to install a block, some type of blocking in here so that you can strengthen this area. So again, another idea, but this one here is probably not going to work as well for a lot of people because most of the time a set of stairs is going to be built in between a couple of walls and you're not going to be able to run a saw all the way across. Another idea, if you could, um, and again, this is just going to provide you with a little more strength, but you're still going to need the blocks. I think if you install the blocks, you're really not going to need to do this. But you could cut an angle on the uh, existing tread. Cut it back. Do not have it like this. If you have the angle cutting, cutting back this way, and you put pressure on the front of the tread. So you're standing on this, you're putting pressure down on the front of the tread. It's going to want to lift this up. Well, if you have this angle cut here, it's not going to allow it to come up. Now, if you have it in this direction here and you put pressure on the front, then you can see here where the front of it will lift up. It's not going to be wedged in between this area here. And of course, my last option will be to use some type of dowels or a biscuit joiner, something like that. And uh, you could simply drill your holes for your dowels into the existing tread and then have the same holes match on the other side for the trim piece or the nosing piece you're going to put on. And this right here just might work fine. Now, remember, with something like this, you're still going to be putting a lot of pressure on these dowels. I don't know how many of these dowels you will need or how many biscuits um, if you're going to use that or other uh, materials 
for something like that. So that's it for the video. I hope it helps. Just keep in mind that main reason why I made the video is to point out that uh, you're not just going to be able to nail a, a small board on here and carpet around it or put something around it and uh, um, have it last forever if you just if you don't reinforce it somehow or use larger pieces of wood uh, for that or even in that in that case replace the entire tread with a tread that's a little wider so that you do have a nosing and you don't have to worry about any of this the other day I was watching a video where somebody was using some type of an adhesive or glue to attach the risers to the stringers and I really don't think that's necessary. However, I do understand that some people just need to do it and I say go for it if you need to do it. I've only done it once and it was at the request of the homeowner who I had no interest in arguing with. And if you are going to apply some type of adhesive to the risers, the best way to do it would be to lay the risers out like we have them here and then place the adhesive on the risers instead of the stringers. You can do it either way. It just seems like it's going to be a lot easier to do it this way. And then stand them up and attach them to the stringers with nails or screws, whatever you're planning on using. And the main reason why I don't think it's going to be necessary to use adhesive on the risers is because you're not going to get the movement that you will with the treads. And you usually get the movement from the treads by stepping on the treads. You're not going to be stepping on the risers. About the only thing you're going to do to the risers every once in a while will be to kick them. However, you can apply adhesive to the stringers, the front of the bottom of the riser, and the top of the riser, because these are all areas where the stairs can create noise from one building material rubbing up against another one while you're stepping on top of the stair tread putting enough pressure on it to make it move and somehow create a noise. So if the only reason why we use adhesive on stairs is to prevent any noise, then I can't really think of any reason why you would need to use it on the riser. However, if you do, feel free to share your reasons with us in the comment area. Here is a video that is kind of a challenge and hopefully it will help some of you. In the United States we can get lumber in a variety of different sizes, but uh, a little while ago an individual asked if I could build a stairway entirely out of 2x4. And they said that that's the largest piece of lumber they can get in their country. And I didn't ask what country it was in. I do know that uh, someone emailed me from Israel one time and they were having a problem. I think a 2x8 was the largest board they could get. So if you know what country that is, feel free to share it in the comment area. But I'm going to go ahead and get started. And again, entirely out of 2x4. And you can use screws or nails to attach everything together. And to give you some measurements here, 7 inch risers, 10 and a half inch wide treads. If you want to leave an eighth of an inch gap between everything, then uh, the risers can be a little taller and the treads can be a little wider. And what I'm going to do is take the stairway apart and then put it back together. So uh, it's just going to be a process. I know it's, it's uh, a lot of people um, when they're doing how-to videos or how-to books, they just show you from a blank spot, uh, you know, uh, or you know, uh, uh, maybe just the concrete here, and then they build it. But I think it's better to tear it apart and put it back together. And again, with these videos, it doesn't take long to do. So let's tear this thing apart. So I'll give you an idea of what you're actually going to be building when you put it together. Take the risers out. And then we can pull this down here. So you can see in this video here, I'm actually going to do this a little different. You know, I'm building the sides up in this one. But when I put it back together, I'm going to be doing one step at a time. So you can do it this way here if you just reverse the process. Or you can do it this way. So we're going to start with our bottom board here and then put in our braces and then we're going to put our riser in 
and then our tread. So we're just going to kind of work our way up. In the other one, if you remember, we didn't put our risers and treads on. We built the side of the stairway first, but uh, this way right here might be a little easier. Risers. And another view of it there. Go ahead and put a couple of more support boards in. And these braces here are critical. They're going to hold this together and you might actually need to put a couple of them over here. If you think it's going to be uh, weak, um, it wouldn't be a bad idea to put another brace in. And that can always be done after the stairway um, is built. But, uh, you know, while you're building it and you get to a certain point, you know, uh, and you're going to be kind of, you're not going to be able to get to it from the back. Even like this point here would be good. You know, you could come in here and just put a brace in here or have it come up a little bit. Uh, let's move it back there. You could have it come from here down. This would kind of be in the middle. So it would start up here and then go down to here and that would stiffen this up. But as you nail everything together, you're going to see that these boards and these boards here are going to uh, strengthen everything up. You're going to have a nice um, connection here. You're going to be uh, nailing or screwing into the braces or through the braces here into the um, other sideboards here. And I'm going to show you more on the nailing here at the end of the video, give you an idea. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area. I know that uh, when I'm building this stuff and, and on the uh, on the computer, I can see, okay, this is a problem, like, I, like I'm doing here. You know, I didn't put the riser in here because I need to be able to get this um, top support brace in. I need to be able to attach the brace to these side boards here. So you can see here, if I put this board on, I could still get to it, but I'm not going to be able to get to it if I put the top treads on. So you could always put the riser on here as long as you're going to be able to have enough room to uh, access some of these other spots and then simply cap it off and you are done. But don't turn the video off yet. Let's take a look at how we would nail or attach these. You can use nails or screws, whatever you feel is going to work best and simply nail. And I don't think one nail is going to be enough for a two by four. You're probably going to need two nails. Um, center them on the uh, where you're going to be nailing into these boards below it and maybe about an inch or three quarters from the edge and if it splits pull the nail out and move it over a little bit and then of course you can nail down the front of this to connect these two boards together and the risers again two nails and then the brace you can use one nail um, per board, or you can use two nails per, per board, or use two nails, one nail, two nails, whatever you feel, or screws. And of course, you can always nail to um, nail the back of the riser into this tread to create a stronger step. Without these nails here, um, you might not have a very strong step. And if you're worried about this one here, um, you know, this one's going to be sitting on top of here. And then you're going to be screwing this. You're going to be making this one here a little stronger, but this one here in the middle might not be stronger. You might need to put a board on the bottom of this and uh, um, screw it from the top or screw it uh, from the bottom or even a couple of support braces in there to uh, get a little stronger connection. And uh, again, if you have any questions about that, feel free to leave them in the comment area. That is it for the video. And uh, something like this seems like it would work if you do build something like this and it's not working. It doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't work out. Let us know what you're having a problem with. A lot of times I'll draw something on the computer. And this is something I've never built before um, physically. You know, I just kind of uh, trying to help somebody out in another country who can't get um, larger pieces of wood, you know. Um, you might have to uh, work with something like this. And in order to work with something like this, you might have to modify it, you know, in a certain way. And again, I have two kind of braces here, you know, um, and this is a three foot wide stairway. And like I said, if this right here is going to be a little loose, 
um, you could always put another one of these support um, side um, stringers, let's say, in the middle. And uh, you would use three of these, and that would take the place of three stringers. And then, of course, that would really make it a lot stronger. 